All right, so I'm going to talk about Redbug. Um, Redbug is a way to dynamically trace Erlang. Um, so what is it? It's a layer on top of Erlang's DBG, uh, which is a layer on top of Erlang trace diffs. Uh, for those of you who don't know about that, uh, Erlang allows you on a running uh, on running code to dynamically trace things. Uh, some things you can trace are um, process events, processes spawning, processes dying, um, messages being sent, uh, functions being called, and then uh, and then there's also Erlang trace pattern, which is another BIF, and a BIF's a built-in function for those of you that don't know. Um, Trace pattern allows you to say, well, I want to trace functions, and I only want to trace functions with this arity or with these arguments being passed to it. Um, so just like you can uh, match in a function call in your writing code, you can do the same thing while tracing. Um, so why would you want to use Redbug? Um, uh, trace function calls and message passing uh, on the fly with no recompile. Um, so it's great for speeding up your dev process. You know, If you're writing code, something isn't working right, um, you know, you could go back to the code and be like, oh, well, you called this and did that and then air it out. Or you could use Redbug to quickly say, all right, well, when this function is called, you know, show me when it's called and show me what it returns. So um, you can dev a little bit faster using this. Um, it's really great for finding bugs in production. Um, so especially, you know, compared to other languages where, you know, it was Java or C or, or what have you, and you had a bug in production, you want to figure out what it is, well, you're kind of limited. You can't say, oh, well, take this new code with some printfs in it and, Let's hope that works. But with this, you can, you know, a good way to describe it is almost like a dynamic print F is, is one of the very fundamental things you can do with this. Like, well, I want to know at this function call what the hell is going on. Uh, and you can do that with this. Um, now, when you do stuff in production, you got to be careful because you don't want to harm the system while you're observing it. And that's another thing that Redbug provides over the, the Erlang built in debugger is that it kills itself if it gets overloaded. Um, and actually, it kills itself in general. After it's run for a specific amount of time or, or if it's seen a specific number of events, it just stops. Because tracing does add a certain amount of overhead and involves mailboxes <laughs> and stuff, and you don't want those to grow out of bounds and, and get you in trouble. Um, and the, the uh, nice thing about Redbug, why you would definitely use it over the, the built-in tools, is that it gives you 90% of, of the, the built-in tracing, but it makes it uh, really easy. Uh, so the first step, if you're going to check out Redbug, is run Redbug Help, and that's going to show you, you know, how to play with it, how to use it. Uh, it's very concise; you only take a couple minutes to read. Um, and then it's the syntactic sugar I was telling you about. So the main thing you really want to do with Redbug is, is find out um, when functions are being called. And what it allows you to do is you can say, you know, MFA when guard, and then do action. So just like you're writing code, you can say, um, you know, when the list sort function is called, you know give me a printout. And then you could say, well, list sort and tell me what it returned. Um, or give me the stack. You know, show me what called it. Um, which is really cool. So an example, let's say you had a KV server. Let's say it was a gen server uh, that handled simple key value stuff. Um, in this first example, I'm saying, um, show me all calls to the KV server uh, to the handle call function and show me what it returned. Um, so you can see all calls coming into your KV server. Um, then let's say maybe I want to see just only the gets to KV server. So you can say KV server and the call. And then you can see I actually specified how the function is called. And, and I match against the first tuple, which in, if you remember in handle call, that's, that's what you're being passed. Um, and then the other two are, are um, wild cards. You know, I don't care. So show me all the gets and what they return. And then you can take it even further. And maybe you have many of these servers up and say, well, I only care about gets to server one or the, the, serve, the KV server registered on our server one. Um, so you can do that as well. And then, you know, you could also say, well, I also want to see the stack when this is called. I want to see what call that call. Although in this case, it's going to be kind of dumb because it's a gen server, but, um, you know. And then, so options, by the way, is that second argument, there's that list where I did like proc server one, those are the options. And the other two, there's more options to this, but the two big ones are time and messages. And this is part of that overload stuff, you know, you say, I want to do the trace for, you know, um, 30 seconds, or I want to do it after a thousand messages, you know, to keep them regulated. Um, and an anti-pattern with Redbug is doing something like this, which is just say, show me all the calls to list, because in Erlang, well, a lot of things call lists, so you're going to generate a lot of trace messages. Um, and the links to know about, uh, the top one, it, it's eper. That's actually what Redbug is under. It's like Erlang performance something. I forget what it stands for, but. 
That's what Redbug is under, and I should have attached a link because it gives you a nice smooth file on top of it. Um, and then these other two links are the early one. Is that it? All right, yeah. <laughs>